Ladies and gentlemen, it has all come down to this. A very interesting matchup for the Kentucky Wildcats in their first game of the NCAA tournament. You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on into Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Daw. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, we are going to be previewing Kentucky basketball's matchup with the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. Going to be taking a look at the different personnel that the Grizzlies have, what stands out, what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses. Going to dive into the individual one-on-one matchups. Where can Kentucky take advantage in this game, and of course, we'll give our final score predictions here at the end of the show. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. Want to remind everyone out there that we are free and available on all platforms. If you are listening on podcast or watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the show. And of course, if you have not checked out the ESPN Bracket Challenge pool that we have for the Locked On Kentucky fan base here, it is in the link in the description if you want to go join up. Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Well, you can take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. You can check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. So let's go ahead and get into it. Kentucky basketball versus the Oakland Golden Grizzlies out of Oakland, Michigan, not Oakland, California, I might note. It's very interesting, the opponent that the Kentucky Wildcats are facing off against here in the first round of the tournament. This is the team that a few episodes back, I said before the tournament was announced, this was the team that I said on paper, I think Kentucky matched up the best with among the projected 14 seeds. Now, that does not mean that Oakland is a bad team, nor does it mean that Kentucky basketball won't struggle with this opponent or even lose to this opponent by any sort of margin. I think you need to tip your hat to the Golden Grizzlies for really catching fire late towards the end of the season, winning the Horizon League tournament, and coming into this thing very confident, as they should be. Let's talk here, let's start things off here, with what the Oakland Golden Grizzlies do well. We'll start with what they do well, We'll discuss what they struggle with, and then we'll talk about how all of it molds together against Kentucky at a neutral site venue. What they do well. Well, first of all, I think something you have to note about the Golden Grizzlies is they do not allow second chance points, nor do they allow a lot of second chance rebounds. According to CatHaslametrics.com, they allow their opponents to convert only 4.2% of all second chance opportunities whenever they get those rebounds. And according to Ken Palm, They are 166th nationally in offensive rebound percentage on the defensive end of the floor, which is just slightly above the national average. Despite a lack of height, which we will get to here in a second, they do a phenomenal job on both ends of the floor at at least getting those rebounds outside of what they should be expected to with their height. Now, are the numbers particularly particularly elite on either side? No, but I think it is impressive and it shows the, the the fight that this team has throughout conference play heading into this thing that they can, in fact, go and get those boards whenever it matters most. And I think that it is impressive that even when opponents do get those second chance opportunities, they're only scoring 4.2% out of those opportunities. Something else that Oakland really does well is they do not allow opponents to get to the free throw line. They have consistently throughout the year been really strong in that department. Actually, according to Ken Palm, it is their strongest stat, at least in terms of where it ranks nationally. They are 38th nationally, are the Golden Grizzlies in opponents' free throw attempts over field goal attempts per game, just essentially free throw rate, free throw rate at 26.8%. The D1 average is 32.9%. That's an area where Kentucky has not really taken advantage of so far this season, but at a neutral site venue, at a one-and-done tournament like this, All kinds of little details that you wouldn't really think about throughout the regular season are going to start to become crucial. So whether or not Kentucky can drive to the basket and get some of those fouls and then get to the free throw line 
throughout this game, get this team into the bonus is going to be very important. And then knocking down your free throws is also going to be crucial as well. Monitoring that very, very closely, does Kentucky take advantage and maybe flip the script here on a stat that Oakland really is strong in? Something else that Oakland has that just kind of impresses me. Overall, their offense, despite a much slower tempo, 307th nationally in adjusted tempo is Oakland. They, from effective field goal percentage all the way down here on Ken Palm, and then you can look on other uh, stat sites as well, they are relatively efficient in every single category. They're not great, but they definitely are good, and that's something that you need to pay attention to to here especially when facing off against a 14 seed that plays the way that they do against good competition. We'll get to that in just a second. But effective field goal percentage, turnover percentage, offensive rebound percentage, their percentages from two and three from the foul line, their steal percentage, everything ranks inside the top 125 nationally. Free throw percentage is very, very strong, although they do not get to the foul line often. They do a pretty solid job of knocking down shots from a variety of areas. But the big thing they do is they get out and they take threes. According to Kipom, their point distribution, which is just percentage of points from two, three, and from the foul line, Oakland gets 33.6% of their points from three. So if Oakland scores 100 points in a game, they will have gotten 33 points from from beyond the arc, which is above the national average by about 3%. Um, Kentucky, by the way, uh, very much so. Not necessarily reliant on three-pointers, but they definitely do uh, get a solid chunk of their percentage of points from three at 33.3% in their point distribution category. So Oakland shoots pretty solidly. Uh, Defensively, they don't allow a ton of little detail, important things like offensive rebounds or free throws. And as a whole, they they just their their offense is just pretty solid. And like I mentioned a second ago, a second ago. It's solid against some good teams. Take a look at their non-conference schedule that they played earlier this year. You'll notice a quad one victory on their resume. Earlier this year, or not, um, excuse, excuse me, earlier this season, all the way back in November, Oakland picked up a 78-76 win over Xavier on the road. It was considered a quad one victory. That's a top 60 team, according to Ken Palm, the Xavier Musketeers. Solid big time win. And if you look at some of these other teams that they have played, either at neutral sites or on the road, they've been competitive. Ohio State, to begin the year, they only lost that game on the road by six. Illinois, on the road, lost that game by 11. Drake, who is a 10 seed in this NCAA tournament, lost that game by eight points. Toledo, on the road, lost that game by one. Michigan State, excuse me, that that Toledo game was at home. Michigan State, though, on the road, lost that game by 17, and that was a relatively competitive matchup. Dayton was the only lone blowout here for the Golden Grizzlies, but you see here up and down this non-conference slate, they do tend to play well and play up to their uh, competition on the road. And if you look throughout this conference slate as well, you will see that to be true. Even against some tougher opponents in conference play, they were able to take it to them, even potentially pushing the game to overtime if they weren't winning on the road. They did a phenomenal job, I think, so far this season, going away from their home venue and making a statement. That is something that we're going to have to note heading into this matchup, is that not only is this team confident, but they've been to these spots before. So how does Kentucky respond? What are some of the weaknesses that Oakland has against this Kentucky team that the Wildcats could potentially take advantage of? I want to dive into that in just a second. Before I do that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we are picking one team that stands out, a team that has pushed it further than the rest just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Auburn Tigers can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have created a lane for themselves after claiming the top spot in the SEC. As they knocked off the Florida Gators in the SEC Tournament Championship, they're set to make a run in the NCAA Tournament. 
You can take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. You can shop all of these new 2024 SUVs at NissanUSA.com. That is NissanUSA.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every single game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That is $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. So just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Again, that is FanDuel.com slash locked on. All right, continuing along here on the Thursday edition of Locked On, Kentucky Lance Dahl hanging out here with you. I want to remind you guys, if you have not subscribed to the channel or the podcast feed, I would really appreciate it if you went ahead and did that. Link in the description, probably the last time you're going to be able to join up to the ESPN Bracket Challenge pool that we've got. Last time I checked, 161 of you in there in that bracket pool. Let's keep it pushing. Uh, see how many guys, see how many guys and gals uh, we can get in there to uh, to run that bracket pool. I think it's going to be super, super fun. So we're going through here Kentucky basketball's NCAA tournament matchup with the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. We've talked about what Oakland does well. We're going to discuss here what they struggle with, and then we are going to talk about some of the individual, some of the personnel matchups because they've got some really interesting players. But let's go ahead here. What does Oakland struggle with? Well. They give up a lot of shots from three, and I really do think that that's an area where Kentucky can take advantage. Opponents are only shooting 33.9% from beyond the arc, which is not a terrible number. It's also not an elite number. It's almost right at Division I average, actually, believe it or not. So they're giving up essentially the Division I average from beyond the arc, but they're giving up a lot of shots from three. They're not giving up a ton of makes, per se, but they're giving up a lot of shots. 39.9% of opponent shots come from behind the arc. According to Haslametrics, they run a 2-3 zone. And they've talked about this heading into the tournament, and they've identified the fact that they're just going to have to do a really good job of going out and guarding Kentucky on that three-point line. My assumption is they are going to switch their defense up a bit just for this matchup to get Kentucky out of rhythm. How Kentucky ends up responding to that is going to be interesting And I guess the question I should ask here is whether or not Oakland can actually run that effectively or run something that can push Kentucky off of that three-point line effectively. Because while Kentucky doesn't necessarily have a strong inside presence that can consistently score, they've got guards that that can go by people and finish at the rim pretty consistently, especially looking at Reeves, who we will talk about at length here in just a little bit. So they give up a lot of shots from three and an average percentage, which makes up for a lot of points from beyond the arc. They themselves, Oakland, does not get a lot of second chance points or rebounds. According to Haslam Metrics, they have a second chance conversion percentage of just 3.9%, which ranks 38th worst in the nation. So while they do occasionally grab offensive rebounds, like I mentioned earlier, despite their height, they don't convert those into points. Neither do their opponents. Whether or not Kentucky is able to crash the glass with as much efficiency as they did against Tennessee at the end of the season is yet to be known. But I would like to sit here and say that Oakland, against Kentucky's big men, whether or not they are able to secure some of those rebounds, that may be the deciding factor in the game. Can Kentucky actually step up and make a play there, rebounding the basketball and shut down Oakland's second-chance opportunities? Because in the tournament... Things are going to really turn up. You can never know what happens here as far as second chance points goes. Texas A&M thrived off of them against the Wildcats in the SEC tournament. Just because Oakland's not great at doing it doesn't mean that they can't turn it up for one game if Kentucky is not able and willing to go and make those kinds of plays rebounding the ball. Something else that Oakland struggles with, they do not have a ton of size in their rotation. Sure, size has not necessarily mattered against Kentucky so far this season when it comes to how the Wildcats match up with them offensively or defensively, but it is something to note here. They are 291st in average height per player. Nobody in this rotation is listed at over six foot nine. Nobody heavier than 228. And this is something that I think that I've tried to convey a few different times this season. 
And now that we're at what could potentially be Kentucky's final game, hopefully not knock on wood, this, this needs to be said clearly. Height is not the only thing that matters when it comes to a post presence. Size, weight, and physicality are also two things that are very important when it comes to creating a good post player. Kentucky has a lot of slim but tall post presences. Sometimes they struggle with their physicality against certain squads. It does not matter whether those teams have seven footers or if those teams have six foot nine, six foot eight forwards. If they are simply as heavy as these Kentucky players, a few inches of height doesn't necessarily matter here. So Kentucky stepping up and being the more physical team with these seven footers, I think is going to be very important against this Oakland rotation because again, just because they haven't done something effectively th- throughout this season doesn't mean they're go- they're not going to get you here down low, even though they don't have the most effective players in terms of size. And in fact, the so- players that they do have that have a little bit of size are some of their best in the rotation, which we will dive into here in just a second. So that is something to note about Oakland. They don't have a ton of size in their rotation, and that is something that I think Kentucky needs to take advantage of if they're going to come into this competition and they're going to take it seriously. Obviously, there's been a little bit of back and forth, as you have noticed here over the past couple of days, with Oakland essentially telling the media that Kentucky's big men, they, they, they didn't scare them. They're, they are not concerned. You gonna and Yenzo saying that, you know what, they're going to let our, Kentucky's going to let their game speak for themselves. Trey Mitchell saying a very similar thing, saying that it was kind of disrespectful to, you know, at least not acknowledge the fact that they've got dudes down there. Um, Trey Mitchell believes that they've got a lot of talent, not just with their three seven footers, but with himself and Thiero, which I could not agree more with. There is talent there. It's just whether or not the execution comes with that consistently. So that's going to be something to monitor here as what I think could potentially end up being a weakness for Oakland. But who knows? It's not been a massive trend all season long, but in a tournament like this, anything can happen. Okay, so we've talked about what they do well, what they struggle with. Let's dive into some of the personnel things, some of the matchups between players, and give our final thoughts on this matchup. Before I do that with you guys, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live game to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV Stick which you can plug into your existing television. It provides tons of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. And whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date with all the latest in the world of sports, sports from March Madness to the NBA to the MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. You can check out Fire TV channels and Fire TV on Alexa devices, and if you have not checked them out, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. That is Amazon dot com slash locked on fire TV. All right, wrapping up the Thursday edition of Locked On Kentucky. Lance Dahl previewing Kentucky versus Oakland. So we've gone through the strengths and the weaknesses of the Golden Grizzlies. Let's get here to some of the individual matchups. Who are some of the stars for Oakland and how will they be performing? Who will they be performing against in this game? We'll start here with the leading scorer, and Trey Townsend leads the team in nearly every single stat category. 16.9 points per game, 7.8 rebounds, 3.1 assists. All of those stats lead this Oakland team, as well as 1.3 steals per game, shooting 45.7% from the floor and 34.6% from beyond the arc. All very solid numbers for a leading scorer for a team. He does a little bit of everything for them, and I talked earlier about how the most important players in this in this rotation have size. Six foot eight, two hundred and twenty eight pound senior. He is the second tallest and heaviest 
most he is the he is the single heaviest player in this entire rotation. Every single player that they have put out this uh, this season on the floor, Trey Townsend is the most physical. I think he does a pretty solid job of getting to the foul line. He is an excellent free throw shooter. He's utilized on the most amount of possessions uh, of the team. He is their go-to guy. He's also got a pretty solid assist rate, uh, according to Ken Palm, as well. The six foot six, two hundred and twenty-eight pound senior. When Kentucky has gone up against solid scoring wings so far this season, they have struggled, at least based on what I have seen. Trey Townsend may end up being a different story here, but this is where I think the matchup starts. Does Aduthiero, does Justin Edwards, does Antonio Reeves, whoever is going to be matched up with him on a given uh, a given possession, are they going to be able to play with a little physicality against him? That is my question heading into this game. Can you step up and rattle him and make him make difficult plays instead of allowing easy baskets either at the rim or from beyond the arc. He doesn't take a ton of threes. He's definitely more, he definitely works a lot more inside the arc than he does outside. Can you prevent some of these post touches from finishing with buckets? That's pretty much all that we're looking at here with Trey Townsend. Uh, he also, I think, makes his teammates around him better, just what based on what I'm seeing. So rattling him, making him give up the ball, not in directly assisted ways, I think it's going to be really important for the Kentucky Wildcats. Getting him to slow down is going to be important. The second player that I want to talk about here is Jack Golke. I believe it is Jack Golke, not Jack Golk. It is G-O-H-L-K-E. I believe that is Golke. He is a three-point shooter. There is no other way to put it. Jack Golke likes to chuck up threes. It is hilarious looking at his uh, his stats so far this season because he, the six foot three, two hundred and fifteen pound senior, has taken three hundred and twenty seven three point attempts. He has hit one hundred and twenty one of them. That is thirty seven percent. That's the best in this rotation. One hundred and twenty one threes, if I'm not mistaken, is the most three pointers made out of any individual coming into March Madness. Not just for their not for their career, but for this season. So 327 three-point attempts. You want to guess how many two-point attempts he's taken? Eight. He has taken eight two-point attempts. That is a crazy, crazy disparity. And that's not necessarily a bad thing by no means. If you're hitting 37% of your shots beyond the arc, uh, absolutely, shoot the rock. Jack Golke is going to be the guy in tandem with Townsend, that Kentucky has to make sure they know where he is at on the court at all times. And he's going to be on the court a lot. He plays the most out of this five, or five-man five rotation. He is on the court the most often, at least over the past five, ten games or so. He's been the guy that has been on the court the most outside of Townsend and then a six foot three shooting guard in Blake Lampman, who is also, I believe, inside that trio of Oakland's top scorers at 13.2 points per game, shooting almost 37% from three by himself. Also, three assists per game for Blake Lampman. I can only assume that, uh, that Oakland is going to go to Townsend and Golke more in terms of shots, but getting those three dudes, Golke, Lampman and Townsend to slow down and miss some of these outside shots, I think is going to be very important for Kentucky. You got to step up and you got to play three point defense. You've had some games this season where opponents have statistically shot poorly from beyond the arc. And part of it has been celebrated as Kentucky played better defense. And part of it has been celebrated as the opponent just could not hit the broad side of the side of a barn. And I think the prime example of this is the Ole Miss game uh, just a few weeks back. Ole Miss had some open shots. They had some contested ones. They couldn't hit any of them. Can Kentucky get partially lucky and then also partially step up and contest some of those shots? I think it's going to be very, 
important. You're looking at a crucial game for Reed Shepard, for Rob Dillingham, for Reeves, and then for, I would probably say, if he's going to play the 20 minutes that Cal has pretty much been throwing him out there with, um, I'm, I'm my assumption is Mitchell is going to have to play really important minutes at the five. This is a game where you could play him at the five if you want to, by the way. And if it's not him, Ivasic or Onyenzo, they have got to be some sort of anchor down low. They've got to, they've got to be some sort of can, at least if they're not going to if they're not going to be just all world Dikembe Mutombo, they need to be at least somewhat consistent where every other possession they're getting something going on the inside where they're not allowing people to just back them down and finish or to hit these crazy layups. They need to be able to establish some sort of physicality to where Oakland feels the need to go elsewhere, particularly outside. And if Kentucky can play just a little bit better perimeter defense, it's going to be a game where I feel like at the end of the day, Oakland probably won't be able to keep up on offense. Sure, I think Oakland can absolutely keep this game competitive, but will they end up winning the game offensively? I'm just not sure. Unless Kentucky goes cold, which is definitely possible at a neutral site, I I really don't see this Oakland team playing a full 40 minutes and and, and ending up winning the game at the very end. I just think that Kentucky's talent at the guard positions is just a little too much. And I will I will eat these words if Oakland somehow manages to step up, hit their outside shots, prevent Kentucky from getting into a rhythm on offense. Um, if, they, if they slow down guys like Justin Edwards, if somebody that Kentucky normally doesn't have take a ton of shots, Oakland kind of forces them or kind of coaxes them into a ton of shots that they normally don't hit and they don't. You know, there are things that Oakland could do in this game to win this game. Absolutely. This could be an upset. There is a world where that's possible. But on paper, looking at Kentucky's athletes versus Oakland's, looking at how these teams match up on paper, I think that Kentucky plays more effectively whenever they play with pace. I think Kentucky is going to be able to not dictate the way the pace is going in this game, but I think it's going to lean towards a more faster-paced game Oakland, with their 3-2 zone and their defense, do they prevent some of these outside shots? How does Kentucky attack that? I think the answer to that question comes with how Antonio Reeves is utilized, especially in transition. Oakland, I think they have some interesting pieces. I think they could be very competitive in this game. For the entire length of the game, though, I'm going to take the Wildcats to win this one. I think they're going to be able to get out of it. If they get out of this first-round matchup, watch out. I think this team could get hot. Let's hope that they do. Let's hope that they put on a good showing against the Golden Grizzlies, who, all due respect, I think they're, they are better than what I thought they were just a few days ago. After further review, after looking at some of their players, watching some of their games, I think Oakland's a pretty good team. I think they can definitely take the fight to Kentucky. But the Wildcats, in this tournament setting, I'm going to hope that they focus up, that they get specific things done, that they do things with the little details like the rebounding, and the shot selection and the perimeter defense, I think that they will, to an extent, step up better than they have in the regular season, and that's going to end up winning them the game at the very end. Ken Palm, who you know I love and adore, has Kentucky winning this game 87-75. to I'll say Kentucky scores a little bit less than that. I'll say they go 83-77. to I think Kentucky will end up winning this game by about 6-8 to eight points. Again, I think it's going to be very competitive throughout, I would say, three quarters of the way through. So that is my prediction for Kentucky's game against Oakland. Let's hope for the best. I think Kentucky's going to be able to have some different things go their way in this matchup. And if they again, if they can just get past this first one, I think they're going to have some success in the postseason. Let me know what you think in the YouTube comments below. Does Kentucky win this game? By how much? Give me your thoughts on this matchup. And that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Kentucky. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Dahl underscore. And you can follow the show over on Instagram. That is at Kentucky Podcast. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave those in the YouTube comments below. Hit me on the socials. I will see you all tomorrow for another episode of Locked On Kentucky. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And God bless.